Hello, everybody. Uh, some very exciting news. Susan Shore's study has officially been released and it is available to read uh, with some in depth results. Uh, so let's actually dive into the science behind um, <clears throat> behind her theories. So let's start with introducing the somatosensory system. So what is it? Uh, this system is responsible for a sense of touch, temperature, body position, and pain. It's a complex network that includes various types of sensory receptors throughout our body, which send signals to our brain through our nerves. Now, you might be wondering, what the hell does this have to do with tinnitus? Uh, well, as it turns out, the somatosensory system and the auditory system are closely linked in a part of the brain called the dorsal cochlear nucleus. The DCN, or the dorsal cochlear nucleus, is a region of the brainstem that receives both auditory and somatosensory information. It's a crucial site for the integration of these two types of sensory input. Uh, in the context of tinnitus, the DCN actually plays a significant role. Uh, Susan Shore's research, in particular, has shown that the DCN can undergo changes in synaptic strength, which is uh, basically the communication between neurons. Uh, these changes can be long-term and are thought by her, by her theory, to be a key factor in the development and maintenance of tinnitus. Now, if we build on the work of Susan Shore and her team, uh, including her previous work as well, the concept of precisely timed auditory and somatosensory stimulation uh, this technique involves simulating the auditory and the somatosensory system with very specific <coughs> timed signals in a very specific manner. Now, Short's team has been focusing on the dorsal cochlear nucleus, which is a region of the brainstem that serves as a, sort of a convergence point for integration of auditory and somatosensory information. Uh, this unique positioning of the DCN allows it to play a crucial role in the development of tinnitus. Now, in their research, Shor's team has observed that the strength of the neuronal connections in DCN can be modified by previous activity in the nerve fibers. Uh, this phenomenon is called synaptic plasticity. More specifically, the parallel fiber input, which conveys somatosensory information to the fusiform cells, uh, can be potentiated or depressed uh, depending on the specific pattern of previous synaptic at activity. Now, to give an example, imagine a busy highway with traffic and cars representing nerve signals. Now, if there's a traffic jam, the flow of the cars is slowed down, and this represents the depression of nerve signals. On the other hand, if the traffic is flowing smoothly, the cars move quickly, and this represents potentiation of nerve signals. This change in traffic flow, or nerve signal strength, is similar to what happens in the DCN with synaptic plasticity. Now, interestingly, Shore's team found that the same protocol that leads to potentiation to fusiform cells leads to depression to cartwheel cells. And this unique finding suggests that the net effect of these opposing forms of plasticity would bias the circuit towards excitation of the fusiform cells. Now, such synapse-specific synaptic plasticity, by decreasing the activity of the inhibitory <coughs> interneurons, uh, which is called also disinhibition, and simultaneously increasing excitatory input to fusiform cells can lead to hyperactivity in the fusiform cells, similar to the one observed in animal models on tinnitus in her research. Now if we analyze <coughs> Susan Shore's most recent study that was released, uh, you can see that they created a portable device that delivers the simulation in a way that is tailored to each individual's tinnitus symptoms. Uh, now, the device is designed, like I mentioned before, to stimulate both the auditory and somatosensory systems, targeting the neural circuits associated with tinnitus, and the goal is to reset the circuits and alleviate the symptoms of tinnitus. And the treatment protocol involves using this device for 30 minutes a day over a period of six weeks, although in my opinion it can be used for much longer for better results. The device delivers auditory and somatosensory stimuli that are precisely timed as I mentioned. Now, the study was designed as a randomized clinical trial, which means that the participants were randomly assigned to receive either the active treatment or a control treatment. Now, in my previous video, I mentioned how important control is.
yeah, control groups. The control, uh, the control treatment involved auditory only stimulation that allowed the researchers to isolate the effects of the combined auditory somatosensory stimulation. And the results, of course, that have mentioned were very promising with up to a 75% decrease in tinnitus over the course of six weeks. Uh, and the active treatment, not the control treatment, resulted in a significant decrease in tinnitus severity and loudness. And these effects actually even extended into a washout phase after the treatment, which means that this indicates a lasting effect. So overall, what does this mean? Uh, well, for people with somatic tinnitus, uh, I can assume that using this device over a prolonged period of time can actually, I wouldn't call it a cure, but um, significantly decrease tinnitus symptoms to the point of them being just, you know, practically non-existent. Now, for those who want to ask me a question like, what is somatic tinnitus? Somatic tinnitus is type of tinnitus when you can change your tinnitus pitch, your frequency, your volume, uh, pretty or your, your tones, pretty much by doing any physical movements. Uh, most predominantly is movements of the neck, the jaw, you know, clenching your teeth, flexing your jaw, opening your mouth, you know, bending your neck around, pressing on different spots of the head. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to this device being released and all that we need to do is wait for the FDA to approve it, which could take anywhere from a couple of months to maybe over half a year. So expect to see this device 100% by 2024. Well, that's all for today. And if you have any questions, leave any comments below.